I try to empower people to get them to believe in themselves. Uh, and I feel that's the best I can do, you know, if they're serious, that is. I mean, I'm, of course, I, I deal with their, you know, essential things like their sound, like their time, like their harmony, like their phrasing, their articulation, all of the above. Okay. But after a certain point, I'm dealing with what does this person play like? Who is this person? What, uh, what do they really want to play? How can I help them in their direction or help them be who they really are hmm. as opposed to whatever agenda I think they should have? So it's a cross between what they need and what they want. Sometimes it's the same thing. Sometimes it's two very different things. Hmm. Well, that reminds me of an experience I had with you where um, I think there was some time where you were trying to hit me to some more modern uh, types of playing and I think one day I came in for a lesson and you just said to me you know what you have a certain way you play and your goal should be to really bring out the, your qualities make them as beautiful as they can be and that that's something that stuck with me that was so, something unique I heard from you could, well could you elaborate on that or yeah I, I think that you know in, in this world I think that musicians have a great mission it's spiritual. I mean, especially jazz, it's not like a monetary mission, you know. Uh, and, you know, to bring a little beauty into the world and to do what you do and do it to the best of your ability. Somebody told me that Duke Ellington, for example, used to write solos for this guy that would be a blues kind of solo and another guy he knew that his, his thing was playing more bebop, you know. Uh, and you try to be the best at what you do as opposed to... Um, what somebody else is doing. You have to find your direction, and I try to go in what direction they want. They, students will ask me, who should I listen to? I say, who do you like? Uh -huh. I mean, it's like uh, if there were 10 women here, uh, you know, you might say, oh, I find this, this woman really attractive, and somebody else might say, yeah, you know, this woman really looks at, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. I mean, on the other hand, I, I've noticed sometimes in your teaching that you'll ask people, come back and play like somebody you don't sound at all like. What's what, the, I, the purpose, how does that fit in? Yeah, well, sometimes they get into a rut. They, okay. you know, they just, they come back and it's, their playing is habitual. And I feel like they need a little shock treatment. For example, I had an alto player who played really understated and just, I felt, man, if you could only get a little bit, get a little bit more of that across. So I told him to come back and play like somebody he didn't sound anything like. So the next week he came back and he was doing this Ornette thing. I didn't think he had it in him, <laughs> you know? And it surprised the heck out of me. And, and from that point on, it, to me, there was some little element in his playing that kind of jumped out a little bit. He learned something in his emotional body that hmm. wasn't there before.